Hello, happy Thursday, everybody. The first thing I would like to discuss is our dear April. Oh, such beautiful, happy news. And to me, it was a praise report to prayer that her lymph nodes came back negative and she's home now and she's on her road to recovery. And I know, as well as anybody else who's had major surgery, recovering from surgery is not easy. But you recover so much better at home than you do in the hospital. I think as once you're well enough to leave the hospital, I mean, they used to keep you for like a week or two. But I think once you're well enough, like April stayed an extra day to help manage her pain, and that's fabulous. But once you're to the point where you feel you're okay to be home, you just sleep so much better. You don't have people coming and taking your blood and checking all your, your, um, you know, your temperature and your blood pressure and all this and... You get to eat when you want and get up when you want. You don't have all that stuff and all the noise. Oh, Anyway, so, so, so happy April's home. Hi, April. I hope you're resting well and uh, you'll have a good day of healing today. Um, I also wanted to wish Suzanne of Suzanne Babies and Yvonne of having you on happy birthday. Um, and anybody else who has a birthday in the month of April, we say happy birthday and I'm going to steal uh, my dear Suzanne in Australia and say to Suzanne, birthday happy. <laughs> I loved that. She's saying happy birthday backwards if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, celebrate your birthday month, everybody. Y'all know I'm about the birthday month, not the actual just your birthday. Celebrate the whole month. So enjoy. You still have a couple weeks left. Um, I'm going to try to do a lot of things in this video, so get yourself a cuppa, get yourself a snack, some lunch or something. I'm going to change a few babies. I'm going to answer a few tags. I'm going to just chat away. Um, let me move Anastasia. I'm going to do a kit review. That's what I'm going to do first. So I'm going to move sweet Anastasia over here, and she's going to bunk with Mickey for a little bit. They're going to be little friends on one pod. They're so sweet. And I am going to put my fluffy fabric here. Um, welcome to anybody who's new to my channel. Thank you for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. I've seen several new commenters, and thank you for that. And maybe some of you have been watching for a while and you just decided to comment, but hello and welcome. Um, as you all know, I'm on a kit timeout, and I did explain that either in my last video or the video before. Um, about it being a tax thing, but I do have an amount of kits that I will allow myself to buy this year. It's a very small number, and so that's why a kit has to be like wow to me. And so this kit I had actually seen when it was on pre-order, when it was first coming out, and I loved the kit, and I let her go. And then I've seen her. I've looked at her several times. Again, you all know I like to see the raw kit. And dear Myra, thank you very much. She did a kit review of this kit. And then she has painted the baby. And so I finally broke down and purchased her. Um, I had a few other supply things I needed to order. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and get this baby while she's still around. Because she is a very limited edition, which I love. There's only 350 of her. Um... And she has the sweetest little face. I'm opening her now. See, she's still in plastic. I just I was upstairs having my yogurt break and was just about to clean my yogurt dish when there was a knock at my door, so I'm happy I was up there, or this would have been sat outside, and it is raining. Or maybe my postal person, maybe she wouldn't have... Sorry, there's a little black smudge on the knee I'm wiping off. Maybe she wouldn't have left it, but usually they do. So anyway, because um, I didn't have to sign for it, we're going to start with legs. and My word, this baby's long. <laughs> this baby's got some long legs. Look at those nice rolls. Oh, love rolls. Good size feet. That should fit a shoe. Oh, that's a long leg. I forget how. I, it, I knew it was a bigger baby. Nice rolls. Y'all know I love rolls. And look at those sweet toes. Good nail beds, too. You've probably seen Myra do this already, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time reviewing. I'm just going to set the baby up so we get a visual. There's the head. That's what I really want to see. The head was... I opened the wrong... Look at that face. This is Starling by A.K. Kitagawa. Uh, look at the dimple in the chin. As you all know, I painted her, her twins, um, Abby and Maya, 
and what does this say? Starling by Cora. Hmm. C O R A. But she's A K Kitagawa. I've actually chatted with her. I'm going to actually message her and ask her what that means. I don't know if she has somebody that works with her. Maybe somebody else sculpted this. She, maybe she's part of a group or something. I'm going to message her and ask her. Anyway, look at that sweet face. Can you all see that? She reminds me of somebody. If I can't think who. Now she, I don't think she'll be able to wear backings. Darn it. You all know I love the, well, she could turn into a boy or she, her mommy might not want her to have pierced ears. So we'll see. Nice big hands. I love that. She can like curl around your fingers. And um, look at that little pinky. Uh, Debbie um, has, Mad Hatter DJ, I always want to say Debbie's dolls. She has um, this baby as a boy. Oh, look at that hand. Perfect. Oh, that's lovely. Beautiful, beautiful kit. And I liked her vinyl working on um, Maya and Abby. So she's a big one. And I know Myra said that. Very cute kit. And let me tell you, I believe I have just pulled her card out with her. Let me see her card. She is number 154 of 350. Produced by City of Reborn Angels by A.K. Kitagawa. I'm not sure what that Cora means. I am going to message Miss Kitagawa and I'm going to ask her because if you don't ask, you don't know. And the only stupid question is the unasked one. So I am going to find out what that means and stay tuned. I will get back to y'all. But this is a beautiful kit. So I'm happy, happy I got her. She's just going to have to be bagged up and put on the shelf. I have started painting my next baby. Um, and it is going to be a peace baby for me. Y'all know that means I will not be showing works in progress. I'm just on a journey with this baby. So um, I will eventually show the baby at some point. But right now, um, I am just going to be peaceful with this baby. Um, I am going to change Miss uh, Saffron and Sapphira. I'm going to put them in some cozy jammies because it's just that kind of day. It's very gloomy and rainy, so let me bring them both over, and then, oh, look at these little nuggets. They are so sweet. I will put them there, grab their little, where did I put their nighty gowns? Oh, they're on the back of my chair. Um, I did not set my tripod up very well, ladies. My tripod leg is in my way of my chair, but I think they're visually good, so... I'll put my spritzer there. Okay, so I'm going to, there are probably four or five other tags, ladies. I have to admit I was a little naughty. I didn't write tags down. And I think I said on some of your comments that I want to participate in your tag. So, ladies, I only have two that I can recall. Um, so if I said I would participate in your tag, please, please, please comment down below because I do want to be a person of my word. Um, I spent several hours the other day going through my history and either thumbs upping or commenting on a lot of videos. Um, and I'm still trying to balance that, ladies. Um, let me see if this Miss Sapphira, if I move you here on the other side of Mickey, balance there, girly girl. I can lay this one. Forgive her fuzz hair. I'll fix it momentarily. Um, but the first one I want to do is Nicole's, of Nicole's Little Ones. And she asked us, what influences how you dress and accessorize your babies? Um, for me, I dress them how I would dress children if I had them. This is how I dressed children that I nannied for. And this is how I would have dressed my own children. Um... I mean, yes, there were times they were dressed a little more casually. Let's say we were going to the park or something. Um, but for the most part, I was very much into dressing them in comfortable yet fashionable clothes. Um, several of the families I worked for were um, what I will categorize as elite families. And so the children dressed more formally. Um meaning like little boys were in button-down shirts as opposed to t-shirts. Um, 
and I love that. So um, I just can't remember whose nightgown is whose. So we're gonna put this is uh, I'm gonna put this one on saffron. It's main mainly hot pink, and her color's pink, and Sapphira's purple. But it does have purple flowers and green leaves. It's very bright colored. It's baby nay. It's a long gown, and it's ruffled at the bottom. But there's orange and green and blue, but it's all bright flowers all over it. So we're going to put that on her, but I think this is actually norm normally Sapphira's. But they're both pink and purple, so either can wear them, I guess. So anyway, um, so yeah, that's what influences me. Um, back years ago, I was considering adopting as a single woman. I think I've shared that. And I had set up a nursery so I could do a home study. And I wanted to adopt a girl because for me as a single woman, I, you know, I grew up in a single parent household for most of my childhood. And, um, you know, my brother was surrounded by women and not that that's a bad thing, but I, I just felt for me, I would want to single parent a, a daughter. And so I had wanted a girl but also growing up in a single parent home, I knew how challenging things could be financially. And so while I was single and setting up the nursery, I went on like huge shopping sprees and I purchased, like I went to Matilda Jane's shows and I was on eBay and Etsy and all kinds of places. And I had purchased clothing from birth through the age of 10 in all kinds of fabulous design designers and and whatever that I loved and because I knew I mean I was going to I was going to actually um, you know have to work because I would have been a single mom but you know being able to provide those things as life went on because of course there would be other things to pay food um, diapers Oh, I gotta dry her little face. Um, so I wouldn't have had the money to constantly be buying all that stuff. So it was more the formal stuff and like jammies and stuff. But like the day to day stuff, I would of course, you know, let a child as they grow pick out. There is Miss Saffron being swallowed up in her gown. Um. I have since sold those clothes, sadly. I wish I would have kept a lot of the newborn stuff, but I didn't. Um, once I decided I was not going to adopt. So what you see on my babies most of the time are things I would have. Like anything I bring into my nursery <clears throat> are things I would have put on my babies. And, and a lot of the stuff that is gifted to me, you know, people do it based upon what they see me do. So um, this is how I would have dressed my own children. Um, so that, I hope, answers that question. Um, it, it's that simple for me. And I, and, and I know, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at her face. She is just so stinking sweet. Now I get to look at the other one. Oh, Sapphira. Um, I know a lot of people think that some of the clothes we put on our babies look so uncomfortable and you would never put things that formal on a baby, but in my line of work, I actually did have to dress children quite formally a lot. So, um, for me, that was a reality. And so, that that's what I love. And I love um, unique things. Like, I had, <coughs> excuse me, I had these skirts and headbands made for them. And um, so, anyway, but I do. I dress according to how I would have dressed my own child. I don't know if I want. I don't think I want. I took off saffron's bracelet and ring. I need to find their other bracelets. They're little stretchy ones. I think they're over on those hooks because I want them to have something on. Um, but I don't want them to... I don't know. I'm not going to have those on where they sleep. So anyway, that's that question. And then before I do the other tag, I did... You know, there's been a lot of good discussions going on and um, Susie over at R Ruby... I'm going to get it wrong. Ruby Rose Reborn. Oh, I see I should write these things down, ladies. 
had a had a really good tag, and and again, I don't want to well not again, but I don't want to um, try and paraphrase her or anything. It's it, it was really good about being an artist, and, and it was interesting when my when my box arrived with Starling in it. I had several other supplies in there, and it, when I opened the box to take out the supplies. I thought about her tag because it's so true and even about the Starling kit. There's so much that goes into being a reborn artist beyond just the painting. There's the research, there's the tutorials, there's talking amongst other artists where you ask them questions you may not know the answer to or you show them your work in progress and they give you tips and I, like Susie, live with my two worst critics, which are myself and my husband. Um, and I will say in the beginning, when my husband used to critique my work, I would cry <laughs> because I would think I did something so fabulous and he would be, you know, and my husband, and he's not joking. My husband's like, I would, he would love to set up a website for artists to send their work so he could critique them. But he's brutally honest. And it's so funny because he, in the beginning, he would say, oh, that baby looks great, but you need to fix this. And I would always sleep on it. And sometimes he was right, and sometimes I would say, mm, mm I like it how it is. And that's what was great about my husband. He's like, okay, if you love it, then that's great. You, don't, you shouldn't just change it because I want you to change it because what's beautiful to me might not be beautiful to you or someone else. And so that's what I love about my husband. He's not critiquing me and saying, you must go change it. He's just giving his own personal opinion. And, um, I forgot to zhuzh this little one's hair up. Um, I got off track in my brain, ladies. But, you know, he, he really is, now, he's like, okay, the eyebrows are too perfect. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Used to be, you need to fix those eyebrows, and now they're too perfect? I'm like, well, haven't I achieved what I wanted then? And he's like, well, you know, look at your eyebrows. They don't lay perfect, and they're not identical. And oh, I'm like, you're killing me. So anyway, um, but I'm very grateful for him. Once I realized it wasn't personal, because, you know, I'm a perfectionist. And so to have somebody telling me something that I thought looked fabulous, you know, and their eye wasn't. And then I'm like, you know, that's just his opinion. i got to let that go and let him... Because, you know, I will look at some babies that are painted, like the first, um, oh, look at them. And there's Saffron. Her gown is also pink. I think it's Baby Nay also. It might, oh no, this is Flit and Flitter. Um, but they do, I mean, their colors are the same. Hot pink, purple, green, blue, orange. Look at them. Oh. Anyway, um, what was I saying, ladies? Um... I know I was talking about critiquing. Um, oh, like the first doll show I went to. I was surprised how many Reborns, because at that point I'd only seen dolls online. And I had my first two. I had my original Mama's Little Monkey kit and my Jean Vieve. And so when I went to the show, I was surprised how many babies had a lot of red on them. And I've heard people in their videos talk about how they really love that red look. I'm not a fan of it personally. Of course, I lean more toward ethnic babies. And I do know they need blushing to make them look alive. Because when I do put that final blush layer on, that's when everything, like, pops. Um, so I get that. But there's a lot of babies that aren't my taste. Doesn't mean they're ugly. They're just not my taste. And so... I totally related with Susie when she said that her husband was her critique, and it is true. But I'm grateful for his criticism because he's really expanded me in my ability to to try new things and improve. Um, because there are things that I I um, did correct or change because of something he said. Again, I would sleep on it. I wouldn't just instantly go fix it because... I'm not just, I'm like that, ladies. I'm a little stubborn. I'm not just going to do something because somebody tells me to. But I would think about it and look at it and then visualize what he was saying. And sometimes I'd be like, you know, you're right. And so, um, but now it's so funny because I'll get a kit 
or I'll be looking at kits, and he'll be like, what are you looking at? Let me see. And he'll be like, oh, don't buy that kit. It's terrible. And he has this great eye for symmetry. He can look at a kit, like a blank kit, because they all know I'm a fan of looking at the blank kit. Let me move these two, and I'm going to change Malachi. Yes, ladies, the time has come for Malachi to go back into his outfit. I just can't stand it anymore. So I'm going to put these two up on their little nook, and then I'm going to grab Malachi. Um, so I'm not going to tuck her. I'm going to leave that hanging, I guess. Let me grab Prince Malachi here. Need you to stop reading for a little bit. Um, so, oh, he's all curled up, ladies. He's so sweet. Um, what was I saying? Painting. Um, I have a foggy head today. It's the weather, ladies. Um, Thank you again, Virginia, for this beautiful outfit. Um, I was saying that... Oh, so now when I'll be looking, he'll look at them, and he just has this amazing eye for symmetry, and he'll say, oh, no, the forehead's too big on that kid, or this, that, or the other, and he's usually right. Um, he really just has this eye, and he'll say, oh, no, those eyes aren't sitting right, or whatever, but, you know, he's like me. We like to see the blank kit. But um, um, but now it's to the point where if I purchase a kit and he sees it like before I've painted it or if he sees or if I show him the picture and say I've ordered this kit, he now says to me, well, I have an opinion, but I'm not going to say anything because I know when you're done with it, it'll be beautiful. So which just oh, come a long way in three years, ladies. Um, and I still have so much improving to do. You know, it's a constant learning. It's not like, at least for me, I don't like, the only thing I have pre-mixed is my mottling colors. And I pretty much use the same colors, not always in the same order. Sometimes babies get extra layers of mottling, just depends on the shade I'm going for. But everything else I mix for each baby. And some things are the same, like I make my own vein color, but I don't, I just make enough for that baby. Um, oh, even like that, he's so sweet in his little white onesie. But we're going to put back on his little Peruvian overalls. Oh, I love these on him. Talk about a joy bubble. Um, so, I am constantly, you know, trying to mix new colors and trying new things and doing things in a different order. And there's a lot of stripping involved sometimes, ladies. And you have to be willing to learn from your mistakes. And, and um, you know, just um, I'll have to link Susie's video down below because it was really, really well done. And um, thank you for that, Susie. And I by no means consider myself quote-unquote there. Um, it is a constant learning. Like on, um, I've been trying from the very beginning to root sparsely. Believe it or not, I tried to root Atticus. I'm not, oh, Atticus, why is he in my head? Um, Asriel sparsely. And, well, didn't he turn out with a head full? I mean, look at Malachi. has all, now, don't get me wrong, I love it. I love the head full of hair. And I will root, still, some babies with heads full of hair. But the sparse rooting is something I have wanted to learn and master. And I am not master, have not mastered it yet. And I've slowly been uh, getting sparser with even some of the curly-haired babies. But it was that straight hair, that how I've now rooted Cami Rose. And I really think I probably could have gone a wee bit sparser. But I was so proud of how her hair turned out. Um... And I've loved all my baby's hair, don't get me wrong, but that was just a goal that I had. And every year, I'm in my, this is my third year, every year I set goals for myself. And this past year, I've really focused on hair, painting, rooting, improving my rooting and stuff. And so, 
I'm going to put his dreads on, ladies. And for those of you who don't know, I made him little dreads, and I just tied them to a brown hair scrunchie. I don't know if I've ever shown that, but that's how it goes on him. I probably should wait till his hair dries. And then I hide the brown scrunchie with a hat. Because he's my little Marley. Really, his name should be Marley, not Malachi. But he is my Malachi boy. Because Malachi was on my list of names if I had a son. Marley was not, but he somehow turned into a little Marley baby. Oh, look at those dreads on him. And then I just hide them with this cute little hat that Auntie April made. We just tuck that little headband in to hide it. And there we go. We have our little, little Rasta man. Oh, look at you. Fist bump. He is so sweet. All right, I'm going to put him back over in his little nest. And I have one more. I'm going to put some um, outfit on little Miss Zipporah. Okay, I'll organize him better later, and we're going to put a little outfit on Zipporah, because she's just in her sweet little singlet and her diaper, and it is a very rainy, cool, gloomy day. And I did start um, Cammie Rose's photo shoot yesterday, the indoor portion. Um, it's a little wet and gray and nasty outside to do the outside shots. Um, but the next couple outfits I have for her, at least one of them will be part of her outdoor shot. So I'm just going to be waiting for a beautiful day to finish her photo shoot. Uh, her mommy's being very patient. I did send her mommy some sneak peeks, though. Um, and she'll be here on layaway for a little while, so I have a little bit of time. And thank you, mommy, for being understanding of the inclement weather I'm currently subjected to. And I am putting Zipporah in this cute little set that was made for us ages ago from, oh, yes, I know your name. She no longer makes videos. She came back a couple months ago briefly. Oh, forgive me. Candace, thank you. Uh, my brain is alphabetical. Good thing she was a C. I got there quickly. Candace of Biddy, Biddy something or other, Biddy Babies Nursery. She made this, and so the shorts are um, a little darker than lavender, but not quite purple. <laughs> and the dress on top is that color, the um, bodice, and then the, the hanging skirt part is multicolored in kind of like the girls' nightgowns, uh, purple and pink and green and yellow and orange. And then there's a cute little headband that the, the part that goes around her head is the purple. And then there's a flower that has a lovely green button in the center. She also has a lot of hair, don't you, Zephora? And for me, you know, you can argue the reality of a lot of hair on a baby, and I have I nannied for a little baby born with probably this much hair, or even more. Born like right out of the womb, she came home at two days old, and I put piggy tails on her. That's how much hair she had, and she was pale, pale white skin, blue eyes, and jet black hair, which did turn blonde. But man, did that baby have a head full of hair. And she was so tiny. Oh, she was so sweet. Her hair was not curly like Miss Zipporah's, though. Zipporah has rooted brows, which I need to try again. What are y'all's thoughts on rooted brows? Because hers are just there. But I've seen some amazing ones recently in my, in my research. And then they, like, seal them down. Hers are not sealed, and I'm wondering if I should seal them. Then they would stay exactly where I put them. I don't know. What do y'all think? But then they're not, like, sticking up like hair, but they lay them like real hair. Tell me your thoughts on rooted brows. I think a lot of people don't like them. But anyway, she's my only baby in my nursery with rooted brows. The rest have 
painted brows. Okay, you nuzzle in there with Miss Abigail. Oh, and my husband did see Abigail's outfit. He didn't say much, just that she's cute. So I even told him what it said on the pocket. and He was, he was all right with it. He's a good, caring, sharing kind of guy. So the other tag I'm going to do quickly, let's see, where am I at? Oh, I'm already at half an hour, ladies. Y'all know I can just, you know, talk forever. I'm going to move this. I'm going to do Suzanne's tag about what's on your shelf. Sorry, I know this is weeks old, but um, I, I, I don't want to say I don't have a shelf, but what I do have is a suitcase, which I'm going to lift right here. That's a vintage suitcase I've had for years. Um, upstairs in my house and even down here, y'all know I have my, my shelf full of dolls and such from when I was younger. And I have my, over where I paint, I have little fairies and other fun little things sitting around. Upstairs I have a lot of photographs. I have things from my travels. Um, Photographs are probably the most important thing to me. I do like them framed on the wall if possible. But, um, yeah, photos are huge for me. At one point, back when I was single, I had a two-bedroom apartment. And I had taken museum frames and created a border through the whole entire apartment. Like every room. It just wrapped around into each next room. And I had photos of family, friends, travels and stuff. But um, what I am going to show, I'm not going to show you everything in here because oh, you can't even see. It's kind of deep. Um, and then I'm going to show you around the room, but I'm going to try to. But this is kind of a, a place where I put a lot of things that are important to me. Um, I keep cards and notes and stuff from my husband are upstairs. At some point I'll put them in here, um, but I keep them upstairs for now in a special place. But this is just kind of like my, how do we open this? Oh, it's been a while. Um, oops. Yeah, see in here is just, let's see, what do I have? I have play, stage bills from plays I've seen. I have cards from different people. Cards that children drew me. Lots of cards, letters, all up here. More playbills. What's that? Mary Poppins. I think that's a death. Yeah, that was in Remembrance. I think this is my, almost my grandma. I've got several Remembrance cards in here. Um, and I know uh, Kim uh, of Kim Philippin, she talked about friends. You know, are we friends? And it made me think of it because my niece and I were pen pals for years, and there's her letters in there. Um, this is a flag of Ethiopia that I actually bought here in America, and I took it with me to Ethiopia with the intention of stamping baby's footprints on here at the orphanage, like as a memory, and then, you know, writing their name under it. But I didn't take ink with me, and who'd have thunk you can't find washable ink in Ethiopia. Duh. Anyway, so what I ended up doing, and I'm trying not to open it because I don't, but I had all the other volunteers and people I worked with sign it and write things to me on here. So that's a little memorial of Ethiopia. There's the meaning of my name. I don't even know, ladies, it's been ages since I've been in here, but this is all stuff that I love. Letters, those really should be back there. This is my eighth grade autograph book. My school days book that has report cards and everything in there. This, oh, I love this. It says, Meadow Sweet, may happiness walk with you. And it's a mirror and a little comb. And back when I was in grammar school, we used to do, this is a Sanrio, which is Hello Kitty. We used to do um, little, like, gift exchanges at Christmas. And this was from my best friend. There were three of us. We were thick as thieves, and this was from one of them. And I've held on to it all these years. Oh, well, that's my zoo pass for the London Zoo. Um, let's see, my kindergarten diploma. I mean, it's just a bunch of a bowling score sheet. I mean, just fun memories. Here's more remembrance cards. My first passport's in here. I can't show you everything, but, like, it's, like, really stamped. It's got, like, visas and stuff. And um, Where was that visa? Oh, that was for China. 
Japan. I mean, just more memory cards. You know, really, there are things, I have photos, which I'm not going to show. There are family members. Rocks. I love rocks. And I, this is a fun story. Okay. See these two rocks in here, ladies? And I know, you know, pe people don't believe like I do about prayer and all that stuff, but I do. So I, when I was in Ethiopia, I took a trip to Kenya, and we went to a place called Mali, Mali Saba, which is Mile 7. That's what it translates from Swahili to. Look it up. It's beautiful. Mali Saba is a, a place. It's like on a, I believe it's a volcano, but they have like, you can stay overnight there, and there's a restaurant and stuff. We were walking, some friends and I, and I pick up rocks all over. I have a... a, a a rectangle glass cube upstairs full of shells and rocks and um, sea glass from all over the world. Um, but when, when I was there, these two rocks were laying next to each other. And I picked them up and I held them in my hand. And I said, God, this is me and my husband. And honest to God, I'm short and round and my husband is tall and thin and I'm white and he's black. So I just love that. So I had to keep them. I mean, that's just my little... And then I don't... This rock, I just love it because my thumb fits right there. Isn't that ridiculous? That's from France. Um, and then here's my, like, my grade school. This is from my senior year. This is my senior year book full of notes and letters. And then there's my stage bill from the very first time I saw Annie when I was a little girl. And Mary Kay Lombardo, we stayed after, and she autographed it for me. And then I went to the 20th year. I love Annie. Um, and then there's, like, little, let me see what this photo is down here. Oh, it's me and my aunt. My aunt has passed away. And then there's like little awards that I got throughout school. And just different poetry books that my books were, poems were punished in. School reports that I did really well on. Here's a journal. Oh, here's a, here's a stage bill for Annie. The 20th anniversary Annie. More cards. I don't know how. i got to organize this a little better. Just again, more plays, more stage bills, journals. Lots of journals, or letters, journals, um, oh, yearbooks. So this is just kind of my personal stuff that, like memorial stuff, that as you can tell I don't look at it very often because I, I, uh, I haven't actually, op you know, really sat and looked through it since I've moved. Um, but these are just kind of all the... I guess paper kind of, well they're not all paper because some of them are other things. But these are just like special things to me um, that I just keep in this suitcase as a, a fun little place. And it's very full as you can see. I mean there's still more room to shove a few things down in there. But um, my whole house is kind of, I, I'm, a, I'm a, I guess I would say semi-minimalist in terms of decor. Um, I don't have a ton of excessive stuff. I just put things out that mean things to me. So it's not really a shelf, Suzanne. I just my house, I guess. But this is my like my special stuff, except for like letters and things from my husband, which I have not put in there. And at some point I will. I have them up in my closet because I like to... They're on my little shelf, so when I open my closet, I see them. I don't open them and read them, but they're there. Um... So, anyway, I hope that was an okay way to answer. Y'all know I tend to do things a little differently than everyone else, but that's how I'm wired. Um, I ponder things, and then I, I do my best to participate in the way I was requested, but it doesn't typically work out that way, ladies. These two are still in here. They've moved a little, and that's because... I took some of Cammie's photos in there yesterday, but they're still loving being in the crib. And Anastasia, I will put you back on your pod in just a few minutes, darling, when I move that suitcase. Oh, look at those two faces. They are good friends, Anastasia and Mickey. And then here we have Cammie. She's just wearing her one-of-a-kind onesie because that's where we left off in her photos. But she's all... I should put a little blankie on her here. Let me take this blankie. Because it is. It's such a... It's there. That's a little more cozy, isn't it, Cammy? It's just one of those days. Y'all know I'm going to have to change that because I just saw the tag. Does anybody else do this? I have to have tags down at the bottom. I know that's weird, but it's my truth. 
There's Mr. Atticus. And look! Oh, Malachi. Mm, mm, mm. I just love him in that outfit. And then he's got, now he matches his horse again. That was sent to us. Oh, now I lost your name. Give me a minute. It'll come to me, I hope. I'm so bad with names. Again, I really should plan my videos a little bit better. Give me a minute, ladies. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about Queen Isabella here. Looking beauty miss. And then we've got Saffron and Sapphira up there. And somebody asked me about a joy bubble yesterday in case they... That's a joy bubble. It's to remind you to find your joy. Oh, she has all these amazing videos with her toddlers. What is your name? And she always puts an ice cream sundae for the word sundae. Unhappy Sunday. Oh, I can see your face. Oh, that is going to bug me. I am so sorry. You know who you are. And thank you so much. Malachi loves his horse. It matches him. Oh, and then... um. Sue Drinkwater, there's my little mini silly. I don't really show her very often. She just got a new um, little silly cone and a phoenix at the doll show. Who else do we have? That's it. Oh, we've got this kit up here. Little Miss Sophia Grace. And then, well, now it's a mess here of clothes and water bottles, so we'll do that, and then you can see little Miss... Oh, Mama's Little Monkey. So there we have it, everybody. That's all the babies. Everybody's looking so sweet. Oh, I have to fix that blanket. That's really bugging me. But what's bugging me more is that I can't remember your name. And I don't want to say the wrong name. Well, you know who you are, and we really appreciate our horse. Thank you. Malachi says thank you. All right, everybody. Have a very, very blessed day. April, if you listen to all this, take care of yourself and get well, my friend. I will chat with you later. And everybody else, have a blessed day. If it's raining and nasty where you are, too, do something indoors and stay warm. I did have some errands. I was considering running, which I'm waiting. I'm trying to decide if I want to go out or not. It's just really nasty. I do see it does seem a little bit lighter out now when I look out the window, which is nice. We've got a little light coming in, so that's good. That's promising. I have to go upstairs and look because it was so dark before. Um, there they all are. Mickey just looks a little uncomfortable. How's that, darling? Is that a little better? There we go. That's more comfortable. All right, everybody, have a very blessed... Let me come down here so you can see their faces a little bit. Have a blessed day, and thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed your tea or your snack or your lunch or dinner or maybe I talked you to sleep if I did have sweet dreams. <laughs> have a blessed day. Thank you so very much. And I'll put links down below to the, to the tag channels. Um, if I can find their original tag video, I'm a little delayed on both of them. If I can find their original tag video, I'll put that. Otherwise, it'll just be a link to their channels. But, all right, everybody, have a blessed day. And thank you so very much. And Anastasia says hi to her mommy. And Mickey says hi to her mommy. And Cammie says hi to her mommy. All right, everybody, be, ugh, be blessed. And find your joy. Thank you. Bye-bye.